I've been trying to work on this integrated circuit, but I'm getting issues with this. So I changed the power supply a little bit, the diagram, so it's a little bit cleaner for me, so I could read this more clearly. Now the issue is not necessarily the power supply, I don't believe, but is actually the issue with this circuit right here, which is the integrator. So apparently there's some issue with the values of the resistor and capacitors in this circuit. For some strange reason, when I change the resistor values and capacitant values of this circuit, the amplitude of the output changes. And I know what you're going to say, the voltage output is proportional to these capacitance and resistance values. That's not the issue, I understand that completely. So 1000 times 0 0.001 should give me 1, so the output should be of a gain of 1. However, when I change these values to just 1 ohm and 1 farad, the output changes again. So I'm going to run the circuit with these values right here. I'm going to run the simulation and I'm going to check the, uh, the output and the input. So you can see that the input is the blue line, all right, and then the output is the green line. And you see that the voltage output is ranging from zero to negative three millivolts when it should be a gain of one because these values right here are 1, the gain is 1. So there's an issue there. So let me change these values. So if I change this to 1 and change this to 1, this then changes the circuit again. So if we run this simulation, we get the output, which is basically the same as the input. So I believe there's something wrong there because this is not doing the proper integration. The amplitude or the gain is perfect, but it's not calculating the integral properly. So I thought maybe it's frequency dependent for some strange reason, which tends to be the issue for most of these op amps because you have a bandwidth where, you know, things start to change depending on what kind of frequency you're sending the input. So I decided I'll just change the input. So change that to a thousand hertz and we get the same thing. So it appears for now that the thousand hertz or the higher frequency does not affect what's going on here. So now let's go in the other direction. Let's check the low frequency signal. So let's change this to one hertz. And there we go. Uh, the signals are like before. You may be asking what about like the value that I inputted. So 1k versus 1m. Why not just write those values out? So let's try that. I thought that was an issue as well, but apparently not. So let's see this one. So this is going to be 0 0.01. So if you multiply these two values, that'll give you one, and let's run the simulation again. Now we get something that looks somewhat right for some strange reason. This appears to be the integral of the uh, input. So now we're getting a signal that looks somewhat correct. Okay, so I'm comparing it to Desmos, and uh, our input signal is sine, so the integral of sine is cosine, but the op amp inverts that signal, so it's negative cosine. So I plotted those values, so it should output something like this. So it looks somewhat right. I don't know, it looks like there is a phase shift. Now let's try to change this to a DC um, input. So if we pass a DC signal through this integrator, what happens is that this is going to not go through this capacitor. It's going to act like an open circuit once this uh, capacitor charges up completely. So what we're going to have is just basically an open loop op amp. So technically, the output should become saturated if I send a DC input. And I thought maybe, okay, I understand that usually ideal op amp circuits don't usually work. Uh, and that's because of practical reasons due to like input biases and open loop gains and stuff like that. So being a DC signal, technically this should saturate. But there is a way to get rid of that saturation if your d signal is too low of a frequency or a DC signal is by adding a resistor in parallel to this capacitor, which acts like a low pass filter. And what you can do is actually send a DC input in this integrator and if it's a DC input, there's not, it's not gonna go through the capacitor and it's, go, it's gonna go directly to that parallel resistor. And what's going to happen there is that the op amp is now going to act like a uh, inverting amplifier for DC signals or very low frequency signals. And that's a practical op amp integrator. But I wanted to show this working prior to the practical integrator. And even if I try building that practical integrator, this still does not solve any issue. So let me try adding a resistor in parallel to this capacitor. Okay, so when putting the practical op amp integrator, it's not doing what it's supposed to do, which is supposed to invert this voltage signal. Oh, that's probably because I don't have a voltage value. Ah, uh, okay, that makes sense. Okay, let me try that again. 
Okay, so it inverts the signal. So for a practical op app integrator, it inverts the signal at very low frequencies or DC signals. So it takes a five volt input, ignores this capacitor, goes straight through this resistor and outputs it, which is just an inverting amplifier. So it outputs a negative five volts. So that's working. So what if we try a sinusoidal input? Okay, so I changed the input to a very high frequency, a thousand hertz, and we still get that same issue as we got before. So, unless there's some sort of phase shift that I'm not understanding in this circuit, there's something wrong here. I'm going to just try building the circuit and see if I get something that looks like this on my oscilloscope. If I do get something like this on the oscilloscope, then there's something fundamentally wrong in this circuit. In the previous video, I didn't show you how the load did not affect the voltage divider, so that's what I'm going to show you right now. So I have a 20 volt load, or voltage input, from my power supply to this circuit. And I also have this load onto this circuit, which is connected to the voltage follower. So ideally, the voltage across this load sh should be 10 volt. And there you have it, it's pretty close to 10 volt. So that's just a demonstration I forgot to put in the other video, the voltage follower works properly. Okay, so I built the integrating circuit uh, with this capacitor and resistor. And I set it up with the function generator, but there's still something wrong. Unfortunately, it looks like I'm getting the same result as the simulation. As you can see, with a uh, 1 mega ohm resistor and a 1 microfarad capacitor, this is my input and output of the integrator. So the input is the yellow line and the output is the blue line. So it looks like although the gain should equal about 1, the gain isn't 1. So that's what the simulation outputs, and that's basically the same thing, I believe. You don't see the oscillation in the simulation because I believe that output range is very small relative to what we have on the oscilloscope. So there is something wrong with my circuit, unfortunately. I may have to research a little bit more and see why this is not working properly. 